Today I'm going to do an upgrade that according to the Evo X forums or uh, all Evo forums actually it's the first upgrade that you should do to your car to gain some good uh, power but if you follow this channel you know that I'm already on basic boltons but I haven't yet upgraded the boost controller so here is one this one is Turbo XS. I wanted to get the grim speed uh, and I ordered it from JD Customs but they said that it's not available and they didn't offer a uh, refund so I said just give me this one and here it is after duty taxes after all of this shit basically it ended up very expensive here to come to Europe but it's here and now we're gonna add it to the car it's gonna replace the OEM passive and active uh, solenoids and we're gonna see if we can get some more power because uh, people in forums uh, suggest that with the three port you can get some more top end boost uh, by the stock turbo currently I can get around 1.1 or 2 bar Mm, and by very like red line 7 500 there's uh, probably I think there was around just over one bar so it's very a small pressure uh, right on top and this is supposed to be raising this by like a good 10% but we'll see this is the main reason I'm buying that because I'm very happy with the responsiveness and so on but uh, it's also said that this should improve performance as well personally I didn't buy it uh, first thing because I didn't believe that but uh, as I read more and more turns out that this is possible and also I mean I've done intake, I've done exhaust, I've done like, down pipes uh, upper intercooler pipe uh, and yeah I just can't raise the boost uh, at all and the horsepower is like 320 wheel uh, and I'm on like 100 octane fuel so the timings are also quite good so I'm just trying to get some more power than that and I see that people are getting like 350 wheel on these EVOs so it should be that uh, according to you know uh, <laughs> according to some logic I guess so yeah let's install that uh, I'm gonna give some basic steps how because I think this is quite easy to install uh, but I'll still give a few uh, steps how to do it and let's see if it makes any difference all right so this didn't come with uh, instructions but as you can see this is re uh, rebranded uh, Mac uh, boost controller so I tried to search online and what I found is and I'll show on the screen so if you're running an external wastegate so different turbo I guess port 1 and port 2 are gonna be your inlet so let's say this is gonna be the turbo this is gonna be the wastegate and this is gonna be the vent to atmosphere if you're running internal wastegate like I am on my uh, stock turbo uh, this is gonna be the vent to atmosphere this is gonna be the turbo and this is gonna be the wastegate of course the vent to atmosphere in my case is gonna go back into the intake because my AM intake still has the hole in which I can pop this in so yeah but it would you will be fine if you vent it to atmosphere even on the graph uh, on the diagram as you saw it's uh, basically muffled or it's capped out so both should work fine but yeah since I have the hole I'll just plug it in there okay so the only thing that I've taken off is the upper intercooler pipe and this blow off valve holes so I have some space for working so here's the turbo uh, hose as you can see it on the top here it's a small bunk and here as you can see 
it's connected together with the wastegate and here's the uh, connection and then if we follow this small holes it will end up right here where these two solenoids are and as you can see it does all bunch of things splits into multiple uh, small hoses but uh, we need to disconnect all of that also one of those as you can see this one goes straight into the intake as well this should be our vent port when we install the three port so it's a bit difficult but yeah that's why i'm not going to record it but you just need to remove all of that except for the passive solenoid this you can leave that and just uh, just then we will just uh, disable it from the ECU but you can leave it because otherwise it will show check engine white okay so I got the actually I got the whole assembly out because it was easier so I just needed to uh, remove those two bolts uh, unclip uh, both from the turbo and from the uh, manifold and those two hoses usually go into the intake so I remove them as well and it yeah and also the two connectors for the both solenoids and that was it it was uh, pretty much easier that way uh, if, because if I didn't do that I would have to go try to access this from here and it would be pain so yeah probably the easiest way to remove it and here in one of these hoses, as you can see, here's the infamous boost pill. I think this was the one that was going to the wastegate, or I'm not sure. But yeah, here's the boost pill. So with the new hoses, we're going to remove the boost pill. Okay, well, so here's how it's going to be set up. The electronic report is going to be on the top and on the bottom is going to be the passive solenoid the passive solenoid is not going to be connected to anything except for the power and to know which one is the passive and which one is the reactive uh, you can check the connectors as you can see one of them is brown and the, other, the other one is black the brown one is the reactive which is going to go into the three ports and the passive is going to go to the passive and in the table actually there we can set it to whatever we want because this is not going to be connected to anything so it doesn't matter we are only, only going to connect these three the boost controller came with a new hose so i'm going to cut it and use that the old hose i don't know where i put it is going to be kept for some good memories but we're going to use that no boost pill here So we have it, it's in, uh, for now I'm gonna, just for test run, I'm gonna leave this uh, like that and here the hose that is go goes to the intake is uh, capped. Uh, I, just wanna, I just wanna do a few runs like that and then uh, maybe I'll cap it just to make sure it all works. Other than that, uh, here the turbo is added, I also added the small bracket from the old hose the waste gate is also added now they are not joined together, it's a direct connection to the uh, controller as you can see the passive solenoid is there as well not connected to any anything uh, what's left is to add back this ball valve upper intercooler pipe and I'll go for drive all right, so <clears throat> the first runs are in, and as you can see, the blue one is the old, the this one is new. Now for the peak, of course, this is going to be higher because uh, I haven't adjusted the wastegate, but here at the end, both wastegates are at 100% duty cycle, and you can see that there's... Uh, very good gap so 134 here 136 versus 117 so that's a good difference uh 
if I had to convert into like PSI it would be from 17 to almost 20 PSI here so that just by the boost controller so I guess I was wrong uh, there is there is some boost to be had by upgrading that uh, and here as you can see here it's really bad currently it's too bar so that's that's not gonna be kept like that I'm gonna change the waste gates just a little bit as you can see this is my target here and this is my offset for load so I'm gonna change that a little bit and here in the reactive solenoid what I did is usually this is much higher but because <coughs> I don't have the passive solenoid which is uh, always open at the lower RPM what I did is I basically lowered down these values so that uh, it doesn't I mean it, while I wasn't uh, I while I didn't wall while they weren't lowered sorry uh, the car was very quick uh, and responsive but uh, for like city driving this for me is not that good because it's always want to go and it burns too much fuel so I turned those down and this as you can see here is what I've set them up so before if I wanted to hit peak boost here I would have to set that to already a hundred I think so as you can see that's much better actually we can do something we can compare them uh, one second let me close this one and let me open and let's compare oh they are they were comparing okay okay uh, let's see reactive okay so you can see the old virus here at 3000 rpm this was already maxed out and here are the new virus so as you can see this one here is lowered from the old one but as i said this is due to like city driving being too fast <laughs> but yeah here and i even need to lower it even more because as you saw it is uh, it is a bit too much it is hitting too bar and that's a bit too much for me here is where I'm gonna probably increase it to 100 at the higher RPMs to get some more boost there but this needs to be lowered other than that I think I'm pretty close to, to having it uh, tuned up properly because uh, the car handle uh, the car drives quite well with these settings here and it is faster uh, I don't know if you saw in the dyno the blue one is the old run and the orange and uh, green are the new ones and as you can see here at the 5000 rpm we went from exactly 5000 rpm we went for 290 from 297 to 315 so that's a good power and that's at the mid range which is usually where you like stop accelerating but uh, here as well uh, as you can see 314 to 340 I mean that's of course it's a virtual dyno take it with a grain of salt but uh, there is some improvement I don't know if it's as much as this because as you can see the boost is not that much more but uh, there is an improvement torque as well as you can see torque, but actually we're going to, we're going to reduce that so uh don't look at that i'm gonna do do a few more runs here because two bar is a bit too much one as you can see i had a tune before to 1.7 bar and it was i was happy with that as you can see i was getting 424 newton meters now it's like 450 which is not bad but i would like it a little bit lower other than that this is pretty much exactly what I was aiming for to improve the top end power 
because as you can see it was very 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 flat here not that it isn't right now but yeah as you can see <laughs> the curve goes a little bit higher and yeah with that being said i think now uh, my car does much what people say on forums they can do with boltons i have the uh catback full actually a full exhaust from even a uh, different tubular manifold to the cat back an intake upper intercooler pipe and a tune i think that's what i have i don't have the intercooler yet i don't know if that it will probably bring some more power because it will cool the temps a little bit more but uh yeah i'm gonna do a few more runs try to see if i can improve this a little bit and i'm gonna call it a day so it's been a few months and i just decided to edit the video and i found out that there's no outro so let me film one quickly so the video was shot in october 2023 and today is uh, june 12 2024 so since then I haven't done too much to the car uh, except for finalizing the tune uh, and making few changes uh, I mean there, there are cheap changes but uh, in terms of power increase I haven't done anything so yeah the red one is um, basically the finalized tune settings so 356 471 uh, of course Take it with a grain of salt, that's a virtual dyno. The other one is actually with uh, the, my new rims and uh, brakes. So they are in total around 8 kilograms lighter than the OEM N keys. So I got the RPF ones, uh, changed the N keys, and then I got the gyro disc uh, brake discs. So Stay tuned for that if you're interested, but here's a little spoiler alert. They make incredible difference in terms of drivability and uh, acceleration and power. But uh, yeah, to summarize that, uh, yes, we did increase the power significantly from 320, I think it was, before I got the uh, boost controller to to around 350, 350 something horsepower, so yeah very very worth it i was wrong again i thought that it doesn't make that much of a difference just a simple solenoid but it seems like it does so yeah hopefully this was helpful stay tuned because i have uh, other things that i've already filmed but i haven't edited yet so there's more to come thanks for watching see you next time